about ready to say good morning. <laughs> good evening. Pastor does it too. You're in good company. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Calvary Chapel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glad you could join us. Oh. <laughs> Can't see anything because of those lights, but hey, that's all right. Well, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity we have just to come into your house and praise your name and just uh, study your word together. Lord, I just uh, pray this would be an uplifting time to everyone, and Lord, that we would learn more about you and just grow closer and closer to you every day. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, the first couple are a bit old, I realized, but hopefully you guys know them, and if not, I bet the words are going to be up there pretty soon. Blessing, Blessing honor, honor, glory to the Lamb, holy, holy righteous, righteous, worthy is the Lamb. Death could not hold us down. For he is risen, seated upon the throne. He is the Lamb of God. Blessing, Blessing. honor, honor, glory to Sacrifice now, let's sing to the one who's called I am as we praise his holy land as we lift our hands in this holy place. holy place where we can enter in by the blood of Jesus Christ he has given us atonement for our sin 
and the love gift sacrifice. Now let's sing. Now let's sing to the one who's called I am. Called I am as we praise His holy Lamb. Holy Lamb, as we lift our hands in this holy place. This holy place, this holy place. Take all. God, all that I am and find my heart on the altar again. Set me on fire, set me on fire. Take all I have in these hands and multiply, God. All that I am and find my heart on the altar again. Set me on fire, set me on fire. Here I am, God, arms wide open. Pouring out. My life gracefully broken. My heart stands in all of your name, your mighty love stands strong to the end. You will fulfill your purpose for me. Save me, you will be with me. Here I am, God, arms wide open. Pouring out my life, gracefully broken.
like a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of old. Your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon. With mercy for today, faithful you have been. Faithful you will be, you pledge yourself to me, and that's why I sing your praise with ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips.
His presence go before you a thousand generations in your family and the children and the children and the children may His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may His presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you He is with you He is with you He is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and you're going in your reaping and rejoicing He is for you He is for you you, God, for all your blessings, that you are with us, that you are for us. Who can be against us, God? We thank you for this time right now in your word. We thank you, God, that it is so rich and it is so powerful and it changes us from the inside out, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who fills us with power and helps us to know and understand your word. We thank you, God, that you guide us into all truth by your Spirit and that you've given your Spirit to seal us until that day of redemption. Lord God, as long as we're in these bodies, we'll be battling the flesh, Lord. But Lord, we look forward to the day when we get to be with you and it's all changed. Father God, we thank you for Cody tonight, Lord. We ask your anointing on him. We ask your anointing on our ears to be open, our hearts to be open, to receive all that you have prepared for us through your word. We love you, we praise you, we worship you in Jesus' precious name and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Love one another.
Check, check. Can you hear me? Is it going? It's okay. We have still 15 minutes. I did. Yeah. A little closer. Good evening. Good evening, Calvary Chapel. Good evening. So, uh, Pastor Joe cannot be with us tonight, but he arrives tonight from his trip, so I'll be speaking tonight for him, and we're going to be diving into the Trinity. It's been weighing on my heart a little bit lately on uh, who Jesus is, who the Father is, who the Son is, the Holy Spirit, and how are they the same, and... Um, I've been having a lot of conversations with people lately on uh, that they are different people. We've had people step away. We've had uh, some of my friends' um, disagreements, so I felt it uh, was on my heart to speak about the Trinity and uh, who, who our Father Jesus Christ is. So allow us to pray. How amazing it is, Lord, to be in your presence and in your house. Open our hearts up, Lord, before you and reveal to us what you would have us here this night, allow work to be done, and let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in, help in time of need. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. So the Trinity. The Trinity is the foundational Christian belief that God is one being who exists in three persons. The word Trinity means three in one. The word Trinity does not appear in the Bible, but that doesn't mean the concept isn't clearly taught. The early church absolutely believed and taught the belief in a God who is three in one. The Bible is full of scripture speaking of there being only one God, as well as a Father, a Son, and a Holy Spirit, all being God. That's where the confusion comes from. So before moving on to understanding the idea of one being existing in three persons, I will point out that the, Bible, that the biblical idea of the Trinity goes all the way back to the first verse in the first chapter in the first book of the Bible. Genesis 1.1 says this, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Hebrew word for God is Elohim. The verb for created is bara. Elohim is the plural form of the word God. However, bara is the singular conjunction of the verb. And every time the word Elohim, which is plural, is used throughout the Old Testament referring to the one true God. It is used with a singular conjunction of the verb. The idea that God is somehow three in one starts on page one and never changes. So what does the Bible teach about the Trinity? The most difficult thing about the Christian concept of the Trinity is that there is no way to perfectly and completely understand it. The Trinity is a concept that is impossible for any human being to fully understand, let alone explain. God is infinitely greater than we are, therefore we should not expect to be able to fully understand him. And the Bible teaches that the Father is God, that Jesus is God, and that the Holy Spirit is God. And the Bible also teaches that there is only one God, but we can understand some facts about the relationship of the different persons of the Trinity to one another. Ultimately, it is incomprehensible to the human mind. However, this does not mean the Trinity is not true or that is not based on the teachings of the Bible. The Trinity is one existing in three persons, understanding that this is not in any way suggesting three gods, Keep in mind that when studying this subject, the word Trinity is not found in Scripture. But 
This is a term that is used to attempt to describe the triune God. Three coexisting, co-eternally persons who are God of real importance is that the concept represents by the word Trinity does not exist in Scripture. The following is what God says about the Trinity. There is one God. Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 1 Corinthians 8, 4. Therefore, as to eating of the food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. Galatians 3.20 Now an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. And 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, and that man is Jesus Christ. The Trinity consists of three persons. Genesis 1.1 in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis one twenty six. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish and of the sea and over the birds and of the heaven and over the livestock and over all the earth and over all creeping things that creep of the earth. And you can see where the Father and the Son are having this interaction. The Hebrew plural noun Elohim is used in Genesis as we talked. Genesis 1, Genesis 3, Genesis 11, and in Isaiah 6, 8. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And then I said, Here I am, send me. The plural pronoun for us is used. And the word Elohim and the pronoun us are plural forms, definitely referring in the Hebrew language to more than two. While this is not an explicit argument for the Trinity, it does denote the aspect of plur plurality in God. And the Hebrew word for God, Elohim, definitely allows for the Trinity. In Isaiah 48, and 61, the Son is speaking while making references to the Father and to the Holy Spirit. Draw near to me. Hear this. From the beginning, I have not spoken in secret. From the time I came to be, I have been there. And now the Lord God has sent me and his Spirit. Compare Isaiah 61 to Luke 4 and see that it is the Son speaking. And in Matthew 3, describes the event of Jesus' baptism. Seen in this passage is God, the Holy Spirit, descending on God the Son, while God the Father proclaims His pleasure in His Son. Matthew 3. And Jesus was baptized. Immediately He went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to Him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to the rest of him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. God the Father proclaims his pleasure in his Son. And in Matthew 28 and 2 Corinthians 13 are other examples of passages that present three distinct persons in the Trinity. Matthew 28. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The members of the Trinity are distinguished one from another in various passages. In the Old Testament, Lord is distinguished from Lord. 
In Genesis 19.24, the Lord reigned on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur and fire from the Lord of heaven. The Lord reigned on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur and fire from the Lord of heaven. And Hosea 1.4, and the Lord said to him, call his name Jezreel, for it For in just a little while I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Jezreel. The Lord has a son. The spirit is distinguished from the Lord. And the God, the God, God the Son is distinguished from God the Father. And in the New Testament, Jesus speaks to the Father about sending a helper, the Holy Spirit. John fourteen sixteen, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither, neither sees him nor knows him. And you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. This shows that Jesus did not consider himself to be the Father or the Holy Spirit. Consider also the other instances when Jesus speaks to the Father. Was he speaking to himself? He spoke to another person in the Trinity, the Father. So each member of the Trinity is God. The Father is God. John six twenty seven. Do not work for food that perishes but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you, for on him God the Father has set his seal. And the Son is, the Son is God, also in John 1.1 1, 1 and John 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. There is a subordination within the Trinity. Scripture shows that the Holy Spirit is subordinate to the Father and the Son, and the Son is subordinate to the Father. This is an eternal relationship and does not deny the deity of any person of the Trinity. This is simply something our finite minds cannot understand concerning the finite God. Concerning the Son, turn to Luke twenty two forty two, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. It's a perfect representation of subordination of the Father and the Son. And concerning the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, also John four sixteen, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. The individual member of the Trinity have different tasks. The Father is the ultimate source or cause of the universe. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Yet for us there is, there is one God, the Father, from whom we are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through him we exist. The Son is the agent through whom the Father does the following works, the creation and maintenance of the universe. Colossians 1.16 For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And the Holy Spirit is the means by whom the Father does the following works, creation and maintenance of the universe. 
Psalms 104.30. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. John 16.12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine, therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Father does all things by the power of the Holy Spirit. There have been many attempts to develop illustrations of the Trinity. However, none of the popular illustrations are completely accurate. Britt, can you put the picture of the Trinity up? I find this to be one of the better illustrations. Um, David Guzik and on uh, gotquestions.org likes to use this representation of how the Trinity fully works. Is that it shows that the God is the Father, that God is Jesus Christ, and that God is the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is not the Father, and the Holy Spirit is not Jesus Christ, and so on. And throughout history, there's been attempts to describe the Holy Spirit like the example of the egg, or the apple, or the water, where they say, in an egg, you have three parts. You have the shell, you have the... Uh, the white part of it, and you have the yolk. And separating the three parts of the egg doesn't diminish its ability to be an egg. But then that also kind of uh, diminishes the ability that God has to take the form of, uh, changes its form is not always fully God or fully um, the Holy Spirit or fully the Son. Um, so this is probably one of the better illustrations. And one of the oldest illustrations they use... Um, dating back to uh, 1100 A.D. was the representation of the sun that they used in the early church where they would say, well, the sun, you can feel the sun's rays. You can see the sun's light. That doesn't mean that it's, that it's not the sun or the sun is not there if you can feel its warmth. So there's different aspects of the sun working, and that was how they explained the Trinity in the um, earlier church days, it was the, the sun was one of the biggest representations. So you see a lot of uh, um, sun artwork or masonry in a lot of the early Catholic churches, a lot of the Orthodox churches. It was the, one of the oldest representations of the, uh, of the Trinity, was the, uh, the, the warmth, the light, and the sun. But um, this is probably one of the best representations of the uh, Trinity. The doctrine of the Trinity has been a divisive issue throughout the entire history of the Christian church. While the core aspect of the Trinity are clearly presented in God's words, some of the side issues are not as explicitly clear. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. But there is only one God. That is the biblical doctrine of the Trinity. Beyond that, the issues are, to a certain extent, debatable and non-essential Rather than attempting to fully define the Trinity within our finite human minds, we would be better served by focusing on God's greatness and his infinitely high nature. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgment and his past beyond tracing out. Who has known the minds of the Lord or who has been his counselor?
And that kind of concludes my teaching tonight. It's a little early. So let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your infinite wisdom, love, mercy, and grace, and what you demonstrate and pour out onto us each and every day. Thank you for this lesson that you've laid out onto our hearts, and thank you for the timeless wisdom you have revealed before us as we contemplate the dual nature of Jesus. Let us come before you with humility and reverence, and let us give thanks for the incredible love that prompt God to become human. In Jesus, we find the perfect revelation of God's nature and the fullest embodiment of his love. May we continue to explore, ponder, and celebrate the divine mystery of God, a a mystery that continues to captivate the hearts, stir the imagination, and transform lives. As always, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We love you, and we serve you, and we praise you in your precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen.